Yes, I'm Steve Quarry, in case you hadn't realized. Razumem srpski jezik, ali this is going to be in English. Because you're all scientists and you're all used to communicating in English. Yes? Odlično. Right. Now, we don't have a formal register, but I've put together a piece of paper. If you can put your ime, prezime and email address and try to squeeze all of your names onto one page because I've got writing on the other one. So, so seat, well, not too seat, net, but right. <coughs> well, I'm pleased to see that we have a full room. Uh, we're late as usual, but this is Serbia. Right. I've got... <laughs> I'm squeezing in three of my half-day modules into one day. So, everyone is a bit shorter than I would normally give. I don't have a copy of the timetable, but I hope some of you have. Do you have the timetable with you? Anybody? Good. Because I shall rely upon one of you to shout at me when it's time for our coffee breaks and for lunch. Um, actually, if somebody tells me what, oh, what time is... So our break is at 10.30. Right, so I've got an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, well, we've had the introduction. That's, that didn't last long. Right. Okay, oh, that's a bridge. That's... Uh, Right. Here we go. So, I'm going to divide this one day course into three sessions. The first is on scientific writing. The second is going to be on presentation skills, both posters and oral presentations for conferences. And the third is going to be a few words on, on your philosophy for writing project proposals that get the money. I can't say a lot in just one hour, but I'll try to give you a few guidelines. So, this session therefore is on scientific writing. How many of you, how many of you have struggled to get your research published in an English journal, English language journal? One, anybody else? Two. Oh, okay, oh right. So this hopefully will be useful information for you. And it starts with this statement, publishing your science is rather like the salesman's marketing campaign. It needs two essential components. It needs a good quality product to sell, which is your research. And it needs someone who wants to buy it which is the journal editor and the journal's referees. So, your target when you're putting together a scientific manuscript is to make sure that your exciting, novel, innovative research has to be this year's must-have Christmas present. I mean, you've got to make sure that somebody actually wants to accept your, your manuscript. So, here's your marketing strategy. Now, these are the points that I'm going to be covering during this part of the course. Is your research good enough? Ensuring that it is. Impact factors for journals. Different types of papers. Choosing the right journal for your paper. Then some instructions for authors. Writing the text. Tidying it up. Improving the English and then an example of how the review process works, and then if there's time at the end, one or two examples of reviewers' comments. So that's what's in store in this part of the course. And I've summarized what I consider to be the main reasons why people have their manuscripts rejected. So I've got five points down there. There's either bad quality research badly described. That's, as, you know, that's the worst option. Then we have bad quality research well described. Then we have good quality research badly described. 
That is what I'm hoping that you need help with. And good research, but not substantial enough for the journal to want it. And finally, research that is out of the journal's scope. We don't publish that sort of research. Now, today I'm going to be focusing mainly on good quality research that is badly described. Now, this is your starting point. Your starting point is what you actually did. And you want to convert what you actually did into a publication in a good quality journal. Now that means that to get to the right hand box, you have to make sure that your left hand box, what you actually did, is good enough for a paper in an international journal. Now, the first time your science is reviewed critically should not be by the journal referee, but by you before you start it. Now, I don't know how Dushan coped with this one. The tale of the lost traveller and the Irish cowherd. What did you do with that, Dushan? Oh, you did explain it. Uh, I hope you got the Irish accent right. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, I, I have a training course uh, that is based on this, uh, which is actually for PhD students at uh, the Faculty of Biology in Belgrade. And Dushan gave it for the first time to his students at the Faculty of Agriculture in Novi Sad. So it's been interesting for us to compare notes on what sorts of uh, reactions we got from from our students. So this is, I'm now going to tell you, it's a well-known story. So has anybody heard this story before? Apart from, apart from <laughs> you. No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't count. <laughs> this is the tale of the, of the lost traveller and the Irish cow herd. There's the cow. Okay, so what's the story all about? Here is the lost traveller. Oh, I've just realised you can look at my screen, can't you? Instead of that one. <laughs> Actually, if I, if I angle it a bit further up. There, that's it. Ah, oh, there you are. <laughs> you can see it much nicer. Nice. Good there. there. Right. I can't, you can't guess who that was. Um, and there is a typical wise Irish cowherd. Well, you can see him on my laptop screen, even if you can't see it on the, on the big screen. So, what's the story all about? Now, the background to this is that I am regularly asked by Serbian researchers, maybe even some of you, I don't know. I am regularly asked by Serbian researchers to help them improve the quality of the English for their manuscripts. However, I often find problems with the research which will make it difficult for their manuscripts to succeed. So I often find myself giving advice like the Irish cow heard on the previous slide. So the story goes like this. There is a traveller in Ireland who has an appointment in the village of Clon McMurphy. It's a small place. Dushan probably didn't get that. <laughs> it's a small place in rural Ireland where there's lots of green grass, lots of rain, Padakisha, Swakidam. Lots of green grass and therefore lots of cows. So Ireland has lots of cow herds. And this traveller looking for Clon McMurphy, he has had trouble finding the place. It's so small, it's not on the maps. And it's getting late in the afternoon and he's worried that he will miss his appointment the next day. So he's driving around the Irish roads, which the Romans never got to Ireland. Did you know that? So, so the Irish roads, they do not go straight. Mind you, I sometimes wonder whether the Romans got to Serbia. But anyway. Um, anyway, so he's driving around the Irish roads. And he turns a corner, and there in the, in the distance he sees, sitting by the side of the road, is this Irish cowherd who's looking after his cows. And he thinks, at last I've found somebody to ask the way to this village that I need to go to. 
So he stops by the Irish cowherd and he asks him, Can you please help me? I am desperate to find the village of Clonmacmurphy. And the Irish cowherd, he scratches his head thoughtfully and he says, After a moment of consideration, he said these immortal words, Ah, to be sure, my young man, if I were you, I wouldn't be starting from here. <laughs> now, that is a story which means that if you're going to be writing a good quality scientific publication, you have to be starting from the right place. You have to be starting with good quality research. So, this was the wisdom of the Irish cowherd. You can't write good quality scientific papers if you're not already doing good quality research with good quality experimental design to, in, to achieve good quality data to interpret. 